All right, well, as you can see, I've got all the guts out of her. Uh, and you can kind of see the design and layout of the boards and whatnot. One of the things I thought, always thought was kind of bad design with these guys is these ribbon cables I've heard, they break very easily with a little motion of repair guys doing this kind of stuff. They can just break these leads. On top of it, PCB mounted sockets are always a nightmare. These are a little bit better because they actually have a standoff. Uh, and I did a little mod where I put a one ohm resistor between the uh, ground and the and the you know output so that I could actually bias these easier. And I modded it with a small bias pot. But everything else is pretty much stock other than my replaced caps to do the filter job. Oh, actually another known problem was that the input jacks on these are these similar types like these plastic ones. They break all the time and mine broke one of them. The other one was okay. So I ended up just basically resoldering in some real jacks and just doing the wires directly to the board. So, But ultimately this could just be drop and replace to anyone's uh, machine that they wanted it to, I guess. So if somebody's got a board that's gotten fried somehow and they have an amp that's still working, by, you know, by all means I might uh, sell that to somebody. So I'll think about holding on to that. But ultimately I did find out one problem. Um, this board was designed, I called it, the mine's, my thing is called Blues Deluxe, but I don't know if that's readable, but this is actually for Hot Rod Deluxes. And I found out pretty quickly that uh, these standoffs don't match up at all with this one. So when I lined up this first one that's over here on the edge, I was not seeing the other ones, and I had to kind of slide back and forth a little bit to realize that the, the next one is, you know, off quite a bit and it sticks out. So basically these do not line up. You can kind of see if I go this way, probably. Let me make sure that's in frame. No, I need to kind of tilt up just a moment. Refocus. So basically, you can kind of see, these are my standoffs. This one almost lines up with this one here, but this one doesn't, it comes into about here. This one is about there. This one is here, there's not one here. So uh, I'm gonna probably end up needing to uh, basically pull off my standoffs and tie them into some of these. now. Uh, ultimately, it doesn't probably matter a lot. I could possibly put these cor the four corner ones in and then just put one or two in the middle to give it a little bit of middle support as well, but we'll, we'll sort that out at, uh, at that point. That's pretty easy to do. I just have to set the board down where I want it to lay on the board, mark a few holes and drill them, and then we'll be good to go. So, so for the wires, uh, I've got those all pulled out. We've got, um, let me show you. These are the, obviously the output transformer. So I have red is the one that goes to high voltage and then brown and uh, blue are my two output transformer leads. Uh, on the other side, these hook up to this jack right here. And there's a green and a black. Although there was another one I need to research. It's a green with a yellow stripe that went to the board. And I'm not sure what that comes from for the output transformer. So I'll have to look that up. Um, uh, but then we have... That could have been part of the negative feedback. I don't know, but we'll see. I have two black wires here are the choke. The two green wires right here are my heaters. And the two red wires are my high voltage. And the two black wires... Oh, I said choke. Um... Then over here, the other thing that was kind of interesting is they jumped on the old board for the white and black leads, but what I've done is literally just taken the transformer lead for the white and plugged it into the switch here because, it, you know, I don't need it to a board, so this is now correctly wired for the neutral line. And then the black line, right now, one side of it goes to the fuse, but the other side that goes into the transformer, this is a little bit bigger end cap than the size of the thing here. So what I might do is just snip this and solder them, and I might even just solder both of those onto the fuse holder just so that they consistently look the same on both sides. This is the negative uh, feedback tap off of the transformer or off of the uh, jack here. I'm, I'm guessing, I'm not positive, but that, that was what went in and connected to this main board. So at any rate, uh, I've got this ready for me to start doing the assembly, but of course I'll wait to do that until I um, get both these posts sorted out and also I've been able to solder all the components on. So I'll basically solder all the components on and then drop it in place and then I'll also connect any wires I think I need to go, as you've seen in maybe my past videos, that will be off leading away towards where they'll be belonging on the front or back side here. I will be buying new sockets for all of these because the, you know, the board ones I figure I'll just leave them there as a completed set. So. And they, they probably wouldn't work well. I'd have to find a way to chop up this board, you know, that was in place badly to be able to use, reuse the board enough to so, but it's just not worth it. So, uh, all right, that's it, guys. We'll show you more as it comes. Okay, as you may have seen earlier, the, uh, the chassis doesn't fit the board. Luckily, uh, the board maker, Luigi Retro Custom, was able to just give me a printout so that I can get the exact measurements. The disadvantage is that it's not to scale. Uh, and so I was thinking I could just use it as a template, but I can't. The other thing is you have all the measurements if you want to use a measuring tool. You know, I have some some calipers. I could get the measurement in here. I could validate it against there. But 
I tend to find that I, and this is more of me probably, that I make more mistakes by doing this method than something like a simple template. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to instead just turn this guy over, tape it down to this thing, and, and, uh, and then looking through the light, punch the holes. You know, as I just look through the light, I should be able to see the holes. Punch the holes in this as a template, and then I'll set this down inside of there. I will cut it to be about the same size as the board. So I'll come back after the hop with the uh, holes punched, and you can see what I'm talking about. Then I'll drop it down inside of here, mark that with my uh, center punch, and go drill those holes for my standoffs. So that's the next step. Back in a minute. I don't know how visible that's going to be, but you can see now I've gone through and punched a hole in all of these different uh, parts. I just have a piece of tape here and here. So that would keep that nice and tight, and I would just, as I went to go do it, I would kind of slide down and make sure I had it flush against it. And now I have it. So um, I will try and make myself a mark so that when I cut this with some scissors that I've got a visible mark of where the edge of the board is there. I'm mostly worried about this top edge because I want that to fit also in that top part because I've got more room down than above once I get it on the standoffs. But uh, So there you have it. I've got my holes punched, and we're going to go ahead and then drill base off of those. Uh, I'm not going to drill every single hole. There's four holes in the corners to give it some extra support, you know, here, 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 and here. There's six in the middle, and I'm debating. I might do the four corners and then just do a couple of the middle ones to give myself some center stability and the outer st stability. I, you know, I don't need to stick to the pattern that they use down the center here. Um, part of the reason they did that was because they had these up inside um, connected to the um, pots. The pots, sadly, are being used for some of the support of the board, which I don't think is a good idea because those pots can get a little too much pressure and it can mess them up. So uh, I will possibly just do, like I said, the four corners and then a couple of the middle ones. So at any rate, I'll be back after the cut with the drills done. As you can see, although I've got a little bit of shadow here, uh, I now have holes marked out. I'll put a little, probably a little bit more qualifying tape here, but I can go with my punch and just pop, you know, bump, 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 there, 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 there. Anywhere I want to. Again, like I said, I'll probably just do these two and then the four corner ones. But I've got now the template laid in place, taped into place exactly where I want it. I did do some very careful tearing of the pa paper here. Just getting ripped it apart so I could get to it. But um, So then I'll be able to mark all of those with a center punch and drill them. So I will be back after it with it drilled. That's nothing too exciting about seeing me drill. I'm sure you've drilled before. So I do have a drill press downstairs, which does make that a bit easier. So at any rate, I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so... It sort of worked. I also did a boneheaded move. Uh, I even wrote a T on my piece of paper. I mean, this was the top, and then I think I inverted it because when I actually drilled, my four corners obviously worked just fine because they are going to be in a square <laughs> or rectangular shape. But these guys, if you can kind of see, this half is shifted downward and this is upward. But when you invert it, it kind of went the other way around. And I'm guessing I inverted it because uh, my center tube seemed nowhere near at all where they're supposed to be. So at any rate, um, I'm pushing and seeing there's definitely some flex there. But with the rigidity of this board and the fact that it'll just be sitting inside here, I don't know, honestly, how much that's a big deal. I'm trying to decide. So I might go back and redrill. I also found I couldn't use this hole because it's right over the output transformer. So I might, you know, maybe just do one here or do both of these. That's what I was shooting for but missed. So I will go from there. But, uh, hey, the, the first four holes worked. So. <sighs> okay, apologies for that little bit of harsh light in the middle, but... As you can see, I've got it all up now. I've got two here, one there, one there, and two up on the top end up there. So this is much more sturdy now, not moving, so good to go. So that's just my test fit. Of course, I'm gonna pull that out now, and then we'll start putting components on. So that's the next step is soldering things to the board. All right, well, there you have it for this week. Please, everybody, do give us a like, a subscribe, thumbs up, and uh, let me know if there's anything that you'd like to hear in the future. So thanks, have a good one, cheers.